welcome to a special edition of Education Matters. Uh, this is during our quarantine. With me as a, as a guest is the Senator from the 11th District in Monmouth County, Senator Ben Gopal. Welcome, Senator. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm great here in my living room. Um, so uh, let's could just go through some of the issues that a lot of the school districts, not just in Monmouth County, across the state have. Uh, how's the state budget? I know the state budget is not looking good. So um, what's your anticipation about the state budget as far as the information you have now and how well it might impact state aid? Um, look, I think that right now it's, it's clear before I got into the Senate two years ago, the state was at about a $32 billion deficit. I, I can't imagine or think about what it is right now. Um, as we know, the only entity of, of layer of government that can create money is the federal government, the state, county, local can't. So we're really relying on the federal government to help us um, uh, with uh, more stimulus plans. Uh, there is a package now going to, to county and schools, hopefully that makes it through that uh, members of the House recently introduced. There's a few other packages, a package Senator Menendez just introduced that uh, has bipartisan support with Senator Cassidy. So hopefully those get in. The real, the first stimulus plan was really not that great for New Jersey. Um, it was essentially like New Jersey got the same money per capita as say Idaho or Wyoming or one of those states. Um, that would have been like after Superstorm Sandy, every state getting the same amount of money or Katrina, every state getting the same amount of money. We should have gotten a ton more because the bulk, heavy bulk of the cases are in New York and New Jersey, um, whereas some other states aren't seeing, weren't seeing any cases for a while. So it's crazy to me that every state got the same amount of relief. Um, so with that said, that's step one. Step two is going to be uh, we have to borrow. The, the question is how much are we going to borrow? Um, but we will have to borrow money. We will have to bond for it. Um, and we'll have to make sure that we responsibly pay for it. Um, there's also going to have to be some revenues that need to be raised. I think we're going to, the state will likely entertain a, a, an increase in the corporate tax, uh, possibly a version of a millionaire's tax. Trying to look at those those areas that have gotten significant tax breaks uh, under the federal government over the last several years. Um, absolute last resort should be laying off any any uh, any teachers or any school funding or, or anything like that, because um, we know when that happens, that is an immediate indicator for an increase in property taxes. So it's really got to be the really last resort that that happens. So. Unfortunately, we won't have a better idea for another month or two, but I think everyone is headed in the right direction. Let's put these pieces together, hope for more federal support, borrow where we need to, um, raise revenues where we need to, also look to where we can cut. We, we're pretty, we're pretty, um, we're pretty bone dry, but you know, the governor might have to revisit some of his programs like free community college and some of these other things. Um, and we're gonna have to cut or put, put, postpone some of these things. Um, and I think the combination of all those things will hopefully get us in a good place. Uh, what would your advice be to a school board member? I know you, you made it clear that you really don't want to have to lay off any teachers or any municipal uh, police officers or anything in that sense, but should they be preparing budgets to look at possible uh, reductions in state aid from the number they were given in February? I hope not. Uh, you know, you can't, we can't guarantee that right now, but uh, obviously I hope not. I, I think that's going to be really the very, very last resort. Um, and uh, I think that with the exception of uh, with the exception of uh, some areas of government where, where there might might be reasonable, I don't know where those areas are, but certainly not laying off teachers or, or school funding cuts. We we have to make it the really the last resort. And just uh, my plug for the school community would be that we actually need a full staff if we're going to deal with the reopening in September at some point because the the rules will with social distancing will make it much more difficult to do things. Completely. Uh, one of the laws that was passed was uh, S2392, which gives some municipalities the opportunity to defer um, their state aid, uh, their payment to the school districts. What was the thinking behind that, or why did the Senate have to do it? It passed both the Assembly and Senate relatively easily. Well, look, I think, um, I think that, um, I think that there was a much more aggressive version of this bill that was put out about two, three months ago when this pandemic first started. And, and the Senate was actually, uh, did not support it. The Assembly passed it, the Senate didn't support it because it would have been a blanket across the entire 
state and not every school district, county, town has the same surplus situation, same financial situation. Uh, I don't know if the, the legislature was ultimately going to take it on, but uh, what happened on April 27th was Governor Murphy did an executive order on this. And that really pushed pushed us a little bit where we had to do something because um, you know a lot of these executive orders can be challenged by courts and it's important not to get bogged down in that process so the legislature has to back it up with legislation in a lot of these situations just like we did with moving the budget and primary day and everything else like that so um, there are a number of safeguards in this in this uh, in this piece of legislation so one um, the schools, have, you know, we confirmed this with Jesse Young, who works at the Department of Education, that the schools have to be paid their full portion. Um, but more important than that is that both the Department of Education and the DCA, two layers of government, have to sign off on it. So let's say for hypothetically, uh, we take a town, I'm just going to throw any town out there, Freehold Township wants to do this and they want to uh the, the local governing body wants to defer their taxes first they got to make sure they can make their payments to the to the schools and to the county and there's a responsible way of getting there and the schools and county are okay two they have to submit those plans to both doe and dca so if either of those bodies feel that there is not a responsible path for them whether they decide let's say they decide they're going to do 30 days to defer the payments for seven days or maybe just residential they have to make sure that there's a responsible way to make sure the schools get paid as well as the county portion. Because the last thing you'd want to happen is payroll not getting made or certain things can't happen for whatever it is, police officers, teachers. So um, that's kind of the mindset behind it. It's been a big push. Everybody, I think, pushes, you know, it's a tough situation when we have tens of thousands of people on unemployment and the, everything going on. We try to sympathize with as many folks. Ideally, I would have liked to see a scenario where the, the individual would have to have come and shown that they can't financially make the payment. So it would be done on an individual basis. It was just very hard to legislate that and put that um, mandate onto municipalities to try to figure out how to do that. So this gives them flexibility. Um, and I think the towns that do engage in this have to ensure that all payments can be made and that they have a healthy enough surplus to do it. Okay. The, the other thing that's looming for a lot of school districts, um, is uh, the reopening in September with the social distancing uh, guidelines that we have now. Uh, do you see what's coming down the road on that? I know this is speculation at this point. Um, so do you have any insight into how what the framework might be in uh, September? Yeah, I know right now DOE and we're all working with school districts. Uh, you know, we put an extraordinary um, task to school districts. We gave them, what, three days notice to basically go all electronic and, and figure everything else out. And, uh, and our teachers and our, and our school administrators and superintendents, principals, they really did an incredible job putting this together and under very, very difficult circumstances. Hopefully this summer there'll be more timing and this can be planned. I don't know for certain, I don't think anybody does, whether the schools will reopen in September. There's also a chance the schools can reopen and potentially close at a later point if we do get hit with a second wave of this virus. I think what folks need to understand is we're floating a little over 10,000 tragic deaths who have died in New Jersey um, uh, as of this morning, a little bit more. And we did an incredible job as a state social distancing, 95% uh, really engaged in, in a hardcore social distancing, keeping our distances. So we still ended up with 10,000 plus deaths. Uh, and now we're seeing some cases in children too that are in the news reports. And if, if all indications, including from from President Trump's health teams to the State Department of Health, feels that number could have been 80, 90,000 deaths easily if, 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 uh, if we didn't take any actions. So um, now it's now that now we're heading the other direction and we need to, you know, the, the curve has been flattened, it continues to get flattened, and now we need to figure out how to reopen responsibly um, over these next several weeks and do it in a way where we're opening that faucet just a little bit every day. Um, and and making sure that we protect as many people as possible. And as we increase testing and eventually get to a place of vaccinations, try to figure out how we can uh, live in this new in this new norm. Um, but unfortunately, it's going to be hard to know that month by month. And, um, right now, I, I, hopefully, school districts are just preparing for the scenario of what it could be. You know, even they might be open in September and closed down for three weeks. And who knows? 
uh, this is this is this is the norm for at least the near future. Yeah, they don't make any plans because it seems like it's always changing. One of the things, and you might have even gotten some uh, calls on this as a legislator. A lot of parents, uh, particularly of the graduating seniors, could be eighth graders. Uh, it's been a tough year for those seniors. Uh, they've lost a lot of their ceremonies. They want to somehow have it in person or some type of uh, ceremony besides just the virtual, which I know will be very difficult. Are any thoughts on how that might occur? Uh, I know I've heard the governor or another say maybe in July or August if things clear up. Yeah, I actually, it's funny that you mentioned that because as we were talking and I apologize for rudely looking away for a minute, but there, I was getting a text from DOE about graduations because we've been trying to push them on some guidance. As of today, the guidance has not changed, but I absolutely think there is a responsible way. I've been in conversations with uh, Monmouth University and Brookdale and many of the other places where we have large stadiums in Monmouth, in, in Monmouth County, uh, including some of our high schools. And I, I absolutely believe if, our, if we continue to flatten the curve, there should be scenarios where we can plan. And I understand why this announcement, they might not make it until early, mid-June for July but there is a responsible way to make sure everyone stays six feet apart, a big scenario. Maybe just invite the parents, uh, Facebook Live or Zoom, the rest of the ceremony. But I think there is a responsible way to, to, um, to do these graduations. And so I absolutely hope the state gets there. I think they have the ability to get there uh, pending any, any guidance from the Department of Health that says otherwise. But according to all public reports, uh, I, I hope the state gets there. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, finally, are there any other issues as we move forward in this pandemic? As, I, I know a lot of things are probably keeping you up at night about this, but there's anything that we haven't discussed that you're like, yeah, this is the one thing that we should all be on the lookout for. Um, look, I think it's just being responsible. Um, I'm, you know, for there's some language out there, folks, and I get how frustrating it is. Like, this is... We've seen different times in history and that we've had wars, we've had conflicts, we've had disease, we've had floods, we've had hurricanes, we've had all sorts of things that have challenged us uh, overall. But just to say, listen, we're, we're done with it. We're going to open up. I don't think is overly responsible. And you can have an asymptomatic carrier right now um, who, can, who, who could be fine and could go in and to an assisted living facility and, and cause deaths left and right. And I think there has to be, nobody is saying that this is not fun for anybody. I don't think this is fun for the governor. No one is having fun doing this. But there is a responsible way to open up. And I think we can get there and we will get there. Um, it's just frustrating, you know, when you see folks and they have every right to be upset with, with the system at whole and frustrated and angry. But there is a responsible way we can open up and get there. And we have to figure this out for the next you know, year or two, and I, I think, you know, Governor Murphy and Governor Cuomo and a lot of these leaders, you know, while I'm, I don't agree with everything they've done, they've been very responsible. And uh, I, I think people just need to handle everything with caution. And hopefully we're at a point not too far away, three, four weeks from now, where testing is way more massive. So somebody wants to see their family, they want to see their friends, they can go get tested at Rite Aid or at their independent pharmacy. And they know at least for the 24, 48 hours, um, and, and we just have to take those steps over the next several weeks and months. And, uh, and the other thing that I know the state's dealing with is the great tragedy across the country of what happened in our assisted living facilities. They made up more than 50% of the deaths and really terrible how that happened. And I think there's going to be a lot of Monday morning quarterback. Yeah, we'll probably, as a state, have to t review our response to this as school districts will. So I'd like to thank you, Senator, for uh, joining us on this special edition of uh, Education Matters. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hope you guys are staying safe. Yes, we are. So that brings us to the end of this edition of Education Matters with Senator Vin Gopal of the 11th District in Monmouth County.